Well, good day there, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve, and welcome to another episode of the Tape Series. And uh, my tape recorder buddy, Mitch, from back in Ohio, sent me this cool item. This is a handy cassette, too. Cassette player recorder. And this was made by the American Printing House for the Blind, Incorporated. And these uh, recorder players were designed to be used by blind people, for instance. I'm really kind of liking this recorder. And what's cool about it, it not only has, of course, the recorder, but it has a cassette tape. So let's do a little mini review of the Handy Cassette 2. Stay tuned. This is the unit. The instructional tape, the instruction tape that it comes with, describes uh, for blind people how to orient the player, how to see where all the controls are. And this particular side of it where the speaker is and these two recessed areas is sort of the front position. And then if you reach around to the other side, there's more buttons here. And of course the controls up on top that are also textured. And uh, there's some input output jacks here. The unit that I have came with the battery pack that has that uses four uh, disposable AA batteries, but these were also sold with a rechargeable NICAD battery pack, and you can also run it off a six volt adapter. So I'm going to put the battery pack in here. It does have a nice little cloth strap here for putting the battery pack in. There's uh, a little groove on the side of the battery pack, and you have to align it right inside the well, and it goes in there pretty nicely. Feels nice and snug. And uh, so the controls on the Handy Cassette 2, well, to start with, of course, the actual tape controls, you're going to have your record, play, rewind, fast forward, stop, eject, and pause. And there's also a little recessed part here by the door that you can use to manually eject the cassette if you don't want to push the button here. These controls are pretty nice. It's actually a pretty nice transport. Nicer than some of the inexpensive recorders I've seen. Let's look at the controls on this side, the front. Now the user's guide says that this recessed area right here is the credit card area because it's shaped like a credit card if you feel it with your fingers. And it has a volume control. There's a tone control between how much treble you have. And then there is a balance between left and right stereo. And there's a detent position in the middle. There's also an index button where you can record index marks on your tape so that when you're in the cue or review mode, you can hear those index tones. And then there is this DPC on or off switch, and this is basically the feature that enables you to vary the speed and pitch of the tape, and that's a really cool feature I'll show you in a minute. Here is a little speaker. It's basically monaural. And on the right side of the unit, you have a 6-volt DC input jack, headphone 3.5mm output, a 3.5mm mic jack, and a remote uh, stop-start also. On the front side where the lid is, which I guess is really the back side according to what they're saying, you have, the, of course, the, the transport lid, but there is a recess in here where you can feel with your fingers and you can actually feel one of the reels turning. And that is a tactile indication that the transport is actually moving, which is a really cool feature. I like it. There is a speed switch between the standard 1 and 7 eighths inch per second and 15 sixteenths, which is half speed, which is cool. Then there's a stereo on off, so it's either monaural and both channels are stereo. And then there's a track 1, 2 or track 3, 4 switch, and this is used for playing audiobooks and other kinds of special materials for blind people. Well, let's pop the... Uh, cassette in the user's guide in here. Of course, you put the cassette tape side up. And let's play it, shall we? If 1 and 7 eighths inches per second marked high on the control panel, or the 15 16 inch per second tape speed. It's not too bad of audio quality for voice use. I haven't really used it for music. Now let's use this DPC feature. Okay, I'm going to release it the pause, I'm going to start playing, and then I'm going to flip this to DCP on, and you'll see the effect of the speed and pitch. Low. In addition, this machine is capable of variable speed playback in either speed setting. Speed control can range from 0.85 times to twice the speed set with a speed switch. So that was just the speed switch 
changing. But now you can alter the pitch also. Watch when I do that. This recording is tone indexed. To find a tone that marks the section of interest to you, press and hold down the fast forward button. Hold the recorder is in its play mode. Tap the beeps until you reach the number of beeps. Press listening in the table of contents. Table of contents. A word description of reference point or controls. Now, of course, it's intended to be able to play back in variable speeds and alter the pitch so it sounds normal. But I kind of like it because you can play around with the, with the voice and make the voices sound different, which is really cool. But if you increase the speed and then change the pitch, you can get it to sound pretty close to normal talking at a faster speed. Cabinet, tone two. Top side of cabinet, tone three. Front side of cabinet, tone four. Right side of cabinet, tone five. Left side of cabinet, tone six. Electrical power, tone seven. Rechargeable battery pack, tone eight. Installing the NICAT power pack, tone nine. Non-rechargeable batteries, tone ten. So that was sped up as fast as it'll go and the pitch altered to make a normal sounding voice. Which if you flip it back to the normal uh, speed. Low battery alarm, tone eleven. That's the normal. AC power that's the normal speed of playback, whereas set to this. Murder, tone 12. Operation, tone 13. Inserting and removing cassette tape. Which I think is pretty cool. I, I like that feature, and but I especially like the idea where you can mess around and make sound effects with your voice, which is sort of an unintended uh, feature, I think. Uh, okay, volume, tone, and balance. Let's uh, do that. Tone 14. Tape motion sensing window. Tone 15. So there's Pause tone. function. Tone 16. Tone all the way down so you don't you basically don't have much treble. Rewind review function. And it just gets brighter sounding when you turn it up. And then the balance. Tone 17. Fast. Tone 18. You can see that this recording is basically set to the left channel only. That's the basic features of this unit. Uh, one thing I really like about it is the auto stop. It actually, these buttons actually do pop up and stop on their own, which I think is really cool. And it has a pretty good cue and review also. And 20. Recording. Andy cassette to warp. Side of cap. So that's pretty neat. Now, I have not yet tested out the record mode, and I'm going to do so here shortly. Okay, let's look at the auto stop feature. I'm going to fast forward it to the end of the tape. And it has a nice auto stop. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, you can have this tactile place where you can feel the reel turning, which is a really cool feature. Okay, let's try recording using the built-in microphone. So, pop that open, put my tape into the lid, close it. There is no tape counter on this, so we're just going to use the review mode to rewind, but I'm going to hit the record button. The Microphone, the built-in microphone is right here on the upper left of the front. Uh, by the way, this little recessed area they call the the hand area because it looks like a hand with the index finger pointing up. Anyways, on the upper left corner of the hand area is the built-in microphone. So I'm going to sort of angle it toward me and put it into record mode here. Okay, this is Joe Van Cleve with a test recording on the American Printing House for the Blind Handy Cassette 2. Test one two three three two one one two three three two one. Test out. Uh, stop. Okay. Now I'm gonna just uh, put it on play and do a review to back it up. Okay. This is Joe Van Cleve with a test recording on the American Printing House for the Blind Handy Cassette Two. Test one two three three two one one two three three two one. Test out. Well, it didn't sound like the best recording I've ever heard. It sounds relatively noisy to me. And of course, you would expect that with a built-in microphone on a plastic-bodied tape player. So let's try that same test with an external microphone. Okay, I have my little Shure Lens Hopper video microphone. I'm going to pop it into the mic jack here on the right side and turn the mic on. I have various input levels, uh, output levels. I'm setting it to minus 10 dB initially. Okay, let's try the recording here. 
Testing, testing, one, two, three, three, two, one, one, two, three, three, two, one. This is Joe Van Cleve with the Handy Cassette 2 and the Shure Lens Hopper microphone about a foot away from my mouth. Joe out. Okay, let's play this back, or re rewind it. Okay, this is Joe Van Cleve with a test recording on the American Printing House for the Blind Handy Cassette 2. Test 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, test out. Okay, let's have some fun with this, shall we? So let me record my voice, and then we'll see if I can uh, modify the pitch and speed of it in playback, okay? So we got a tape in there, record mode. Luke, I'm your father. Luke, I'm your father. Luke, I'm your father. Yeah, I know, real silly, right? Okay, let's do the DPC now. I'm your father. Kind of cute. My impressions are that it is a pretty good tape player uh, for pre-recorded materials, uh, for voice use especially. I, I think it's fine. I actually think the transport mechanism is probably a one notch above a lot of the really inexpensive cassette players that you see these days. The auto stop does work really good. The cue and review works really well. Again, I like the little tactile thing where you can feel the reel turning and uh, and it's sort of form factor is reminds me of a just an oversized Walkman. Uh, it's kind of nice, actually. I even like the rubbery feet. They're about a quarter inch long, approximately, and they're nice and rubbery. So it does have nice uh, support there. It sits on your table or countertop quite nice. I especially like the speed and pitch controls. I think that has a lot of potential use for uh, doing experimental sound effects and things like that. That might be a really a lot of fun. I know that wasn't what this was originally intended to do, but I think it's a cool feature and uh, I might be using that in the future, so who knows. But of course the downside on this machine is recording with either the built-in mic or an external mic, even a fairly good quality mic like my Shure Lens Hopper, it is very poor quality recording. So I wouldn't count on this as being a recorder per se, maybe a, just a playback device that gives you that variable speed and pitch, which I think it's really good use case, and of course playing back pre-recorded tapes. My friend Mitch and I are in a series of uh, audio cassette letters and he sent me a tape and uh, it was fun listening to it and I probably won't be recording a reply on this machine. I'll probably use another machine, but anyways, I really like the form factor of it and just the overall quality for pre-recorded audio. I think that's the best use case for this machine. Um, I went looking online for Handy Cassette 2s and it looks like they're available through different sellers, but on the actual APH.org's website, they have the picture of this recorder, but they don't actually show them being sold anymore. So I think they're selling just the digital players only now for blind people, but the the tape players are probably available out on the used market. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve, a handy cassette too. It's kind of an interesting device. Uh, I like all the connectivity and it's built really solid and just seems uh, it's well thought out as far as the layout and everything. The only downside is the record quality is fairly poor. At least the sample that I have, it's fairly poor. Well, Hope this was interesting to you guys, and we'll do another tape series video probably next week. I have a micro cassette player I have to review. So, okay, until then, guys, stay well, stay creative, and have a great day. Bye-bye.